big crappie, y'all. I'm talking big. She's so big, I can't get her all in the picture. See you later, big mama. Go make some babies. What's happening, jig heads? Welcome back to the channel. I got some big crappie in store for y'all today. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about the double jig rig, tie and loop knots, rigging plastics on sickle hooks, and how to attach a clip bobber to your line. Stick around. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Um, had several of you guys asking some of these questions on other social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. So I thought I'd take a minute today and address some of these topics. So y'all see me using the double jig rig quite a bit on the channel, if you're a regular. If you're not, welcome to the channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Greatly appreciate it, it's free, helps out the channel, and I'm glad to have you watching today. So the double jig rig, effective way to cover two points in the water column, even if you're fishing from the bank, gets two baits out there, just increases your chances of catching crappie. Uh, how I tie the double jig rig is with two loop knots, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. We're gonna start off with 32nd ounce, chartreuse jig head, number two hook, wire keeper. Why do I use these? That wire keeper actually prevents your plastics from busting out when you're using lead keepers. Lead keepers have that tendency to just pop a plastic open and you may get two or three fish out of it and you're changing plastics, either that or you're sliding that plastic back up on that jig head for the rest of the day. Wire keeper avoids that. Number two hooks, why do I use number two hooks? I use number two hooks because it is a larger hook. They're sickle hooks as well. In my opinion, the sickle hook and the larger number two hook, you get better hook sets, you miss less fish. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use a smaller 32nd ounce jig head with like a number four hook. But what I would recommend you guys do, take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend that hook gap up. That's going to increase your hookup ratio if you're using those smaller jig heads. All right, y'all, tying a loop knot. Going to be uh, really pretty simple, honestly. Thread your mono line through your eyelet. Keep in mind I'm fishing from the bank, so I like to keep my jigs about eight inches apart. So I usually do about 18 additional inches of tag line. Double that line over, just like that. I'm gonna see if I can't do a close-up shot of this to overlay this as I'm talking through. Um, pinch your line, take that around your pinky and your ring finger, and that creates a loop right here run that jig through that loop that you've made three times. So there's one, two, and three. Once you get that done, pinch this excess, your, your basically your loop points right here, and pull your two tag ends tight. Keep it pinched because you want that loop as close to your eyelet as possible. And that's what that looks like when it's done. And as you can see, that loop knot, it allows your jig to hang more horizontal in the water, more natural. More natural means more bites. Now we've got all this extra tag in, guys. We're gonna do the exact same thing on this next jig. I like to kind of keep my line tight when I do this too. Helps out quite a bit. I try to keep eight inches, six to eight inches in between my two jigs. And we're gonna repeat that process. Pinch your excess tag line, loop it around your pinky and your ring finger. Create that loop right there and just run this jig through one, two, three times. Pinch it. and draw your two tag ends tight. Better to have too much tag in than not enough. Clip that off. And there it is, y'all. Double jig rig. It's deadly. It's effective as all get out. It's something that I pretty much use on 90% of my crappie fishing trips. Now let's talk a little bit about putting plastics 
onto your sickle hooks with your wire keeper. Now the way that I do this, I'm gonna hook it shallow on the front end because the back end is gonna be buried into your wire keeper. So you want a little extra back here so it stays secure. Run that all the way to the tail and just push that right up onto your jig. That wire keeper gets buried into your plastic and that thing's not going anywhere. You can catch fish all day on that and not destroy the plastic. One more look at that. So again, I'm gonna hook this real shallow up front, leave an excess here. Take it to the tail, bringing it up, plugging that right there onto that wire keeper. And that's it. Plastics are on. Next thing you wanna do, clip floats. I'm a big fan of clip floats. And I've had some of you guys ask me if I clip it on the bottom and the top or just the top or just the bottom. I clip it on the bottom. And the reason for that is, is you're gonna have a better indicator on bites. If it's a light bite, sometimes those crappie will just knock it sideways. Sometimes it'll just twitch in the water a little bit. So having it clipped on the bottom is key. Same thing with this like to try to keep the line tight to the uh, rod tip because when I do this, I'm gonna determine how deep I want the top jig in the water column, and then I'm gonna double wrap, pull that tight, I'm gonna double wrap this monofilament line two times around the hook on that clip float. And what that does is it keeps your float from sliding up and down your line. Hook sets, uh, big fish will drag it up and down a line, and you want to make sure you're staying in the same depth that you're catching fish. Once you determine what depth they're at, of course you might have to, you know, change your depth up and down uh, as you're fishing to find where those fish are in the water column. But by double wrapping that mono around that, that clip on the bottom of your clip float, it keeps it from sliding up and down your line. Anyway, y'all. I hope some of that information was helpful for you guys today. If you find it helpful, give it a thumbs up and stick around for some of these big crappie today, guys. There's some nice ones. There we go. That's a good one. Big crappie, y'all. I'm talking big. <laughs> that is a giant. Let's get down here and get him. Boom. Frickin' tank. That's what we're after. That thing just frickin' smoked it, man. We gotta get a picture with this one. Look at how fat she is. Big old belly on her. She's so big I can't get her all in the picture. Dang, that's a good fish. Let's bump it, see how big it is. I'm interested to know. Try and find a level spot here. There ain't too much of that down here on these rocks. We're back out for some more close quarter combat. Right at 14, y'all. Right at 14. Look at how thick that fish is. I mean, that's just a beautiful white crappie. And we ain't gonna mess around. We're gonna get this fish back so she can do her business. See you later, big mama. 
go make some babies. Fourteen inch tanker. That's officially the biggest crappie I've caught so far this year. See if I'd have been smart enough to bring the kayak with me, I could have worked this whole bank back in here. Instead, I'm stranded here on the bank, fishing one stretch. That's all right. That 14 incher made it all worth it this morning. Come on now. I wish the action was hotter. Well, asking you shall receive with another giant. Thank you, Lord. Another toad. We'll get down here and get him. Look at that one. Ain't quite as big as that first one, but that is another giant female. Yeah, fat as can be. Let's get that one on the bumper too. Here I was getting to have a few doubts, man. Look okay, there, y'all. Just a scotch over 13. That's a dang good fish. We're gonna get a better picture with this one. I'll be right back. There it is, y'all. Big mama number two of the day. We'll get down here and get her turned loose. See you later, big girl. That's what I'm talking about. Now what I'm doing down here today, guys, double jig rigging. I got a 32nd ounce jig head chartreuse pink from Ketchum Jig Heads. Those have number two hooks, wire keepers. Great, great quality product. And then I've got those rigged up with uh, brush diver and brush hammer from brush pile jigs. That's going to be the ghost hunter. And we've got that under a float probably about 18 inches deep. We're just down here working the banks, looking for some of these females that are laid up, getting ready to do their business. Time to get busy with it. Spawn time, y'all. Brings out the big girls. All right, y'all, I'm wrapping this one up. Had a great time out here this morning chasing big crappie. It's springtime. These fish are up, they're shallow, they're moving, and they're hungry. So get out there, get on some, have a good time. Appreciate you guys coming along with me today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to think about hitting that subscribe button. It's free and it helps the channel. And remember, you can't catch them sitting on the couch. I'll see y'all on the next one.